Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out where your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 80. I'm going to call this one the Jerry Rice edition. This is the show where we talk about what's new in the App Store, and we find tips and news and tricks, and we tell you what's worth your time and your money. I'm Sarah Lane, your guide to all things iOS. Numero uno. So how often do you use your phone's contact list for anything other than calling or texting people? There's not really much more to do with it, at least for me. And sometimes I add a person into my address book and then I don't really keep in touch with them and then that entry confuses me later. How do I know that Alex guy from Twitter? Well, a free app called Connect is designed to not only give me a little bit more context, but help me keep track of everyone, whether they're my best friends or someone I met on a trip years ago. With Connect, you manage your networks like Foursquare, Facebook, Google, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn from one place. By the way, this app is technically in beta, and it acted a little wonky with some of my logins. But once I'm mostly up and running, friends and acquaintances start showing up on a map based on where they live and or where they've recently checked in. I can share my coordinates too. In fact, I can even set a time range where I'll be somewhere for a limited amount of time. If I want to look up a particular contact, that's easy. And let's say I want to track certain people. Say we're all flying into a city for a conference, South by Southwest or something like that. I can add them to a customized list and then get notified as soon as they update their info. So I think Connect has promise. There's also a web version of the app at connect.com, which makes the service easy to use everywhere on lots of devices. And I like the overall UI. And it's nice to see location-based services like Instagram built right in there. With some kinks ironed out, I think Connect only enhances your contact list as long as you care what everybody's doing in the first place. Number two. We got an email from Ivan who's got a tip that he says he found by accident. Ivan writes, I just found out this morning on my way to work that you can turn on and off assistive touch by pressing the home button three times. This can be a big help if you don't want to go through the cumbersome settings menu. Just thought I'd share that and keep up the great work. Well, thank you, Ivan. And Ivan, you are correct, although the setting isn't actually on by default, so it could confuse some people. If you do go into your settings, then general, then accessibility, and scroll down to accessibility shortcut, you have the option to activate triple click for as many options as you like. Speaking of, do you even know what any of these things do? How about a little accessibility refresher course? OK, so the voiceover option is a great way to have voiceover whatever's on. on the screen read to you. Like an article, for example. I started looking into the Bitcoin startup ecosystem. Inverting colors does what it sounds like. Maybe you're on a plane or you're in a tent in the woods or somewhere else where a dark background is preferred over a bright white screen. That happens sometimes. Zoom lets you double tap the screen with three fingers to zoom in or out of anything on screen. Say an Instagram photo you wish was a tiny bit bigger. Switch control lets you control your iPhone by performing actions like item scanning, point scanning that uses scan crosshairs to pick a screen location, even a manual selection so you can move from item to item on demand. And finally, assistive touch. If you want shortcuts to pretty much anything on your iPhone, assistive touch gives you virtual settings menus that you can customize to your heart's content via custom gestures and a floating home button. Obviously, accessibility settings are mostly designed to help those who have limited vision or motion or hearing, etc. But it's kind of nice to know how they work for those of us who like to hack our iOS experience just for fun. Number two. We got an email from Nelson, who's on the road a lot with the NYU basketball team and has a great time passer game recommendation for all of us. Nelson writes, this weekend, Pyro Jump helped me get from New York City to Atlanta to Rochester and back on multiple buses and planes. Whenever I stopped myself from throwing my phone at a wall during Flappy Bird, I went right back to Pyro Jump. The animations are entertaining, sharp looking. The gameplay is simple yet challenging enough with the one, two, or three star system everyone's accustomed to. For a free universal download, it deserves a spot in the games folder for those passing time moments. 
Well, Nelson, you really have great timing because I'm about to get on a plane tomorrow and I need something to keep me occupied for a few hours. So I tried Pyro Jump and I think it's pretty cute. You're a little flame who's chasing a paper princess who's running from you because you think she thinks you're gonna burn her up. And anyway, you have to navigate through challenges to catch her. It'll take you a while for sure. There's 70 levels, there's 20 bonus levels. The company says more levels are coming. And like Nelson said, it's fun without being rage inducing or just too hard. I like Pyro Jump. Thanks, Nelson. And go Violet Bobcats. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by our friends at Gazelle. If you're thinking about getting a new iPad or, or a new iPhone, Gazelle wants to buy your used ones and give you cash. What you do is go to gazelle.com, that's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com, and just enter the item that you'd like to trade in. Tell Gazelle the condition, be honest, they'll even buy broken gadgets. Then Gazelle will give you a risk-free offer for your gadgets and free shipping. That number is locked in for 30 days. So you've got some time to set up your new device and, and get things prepared. When it's time to get paid, you get paid fast by check, PayPal, or for an extra 5%, an Amazon gift card. Payment is fast, just within a few days of the item being received, and those offers are good for 30 days. Gazelle will even wipe your data for free. It's trustworthy, Gazelle's paid more than $100 million to over 700,000 customers. Free shipping, fast process, think about it, an iPhone 5, an iPad 3, even a Samsung Galaxy S2. Maybe you wanna get rid of that, you love the iPhone. What is your iPhone or other gadget worth? Take a minute, go to gazelle.com to find out. Do it now because your iPhone may lose value the longer you wait. Thanks so much to Gazelle for sponsoring this episode of i5. Numero cat starting to mix my languages, it's fine. All right, so I'm a little tired of hearing how Facebook bought WhatsApp for $19 billion, OMG, OMG, so much money, yes, okay. But it got me thinking that we haven't really talked about why WhatsApp works so well for the 450 million odd people worldwide that use it, it's a lot of people. Not in a while anyway, I think we actually covered it on i5 about a year ago, and then we forgot about it, so anyway, Here's a little reminder of why WhatsApp is a great communication tool and why Facebook wanted it. First, it bypasses SMS for text messages, for pictures, even audio notes. Well, you're going to Miami, so, so stop giving us a hard time. And video. The app is free for a year, and then it's only a dollar per year after that. It's basically still free, but think, the company makes many, many millions of dollars off of those dollars for each of us. Here's some highlights. No message limits. Group chat is supported. No international charges to worry about. That can be a concern via SMS. And it pulls from your contacts. So if you know someone on WhatsApp, they're already in your buddy list. This is one of those sleeping giant apps that flew under the radar for so many people because messaging apps are a dime a dozen. But you can't argue with a service getting roughly one million installs per day. I hope the Facebook team, though, integrates WhatsApp with Facebook Messenger, which really is a beautiful iPhone app, just not as functional. Finally, number five, going back to English, just to, you know, keep it honest. Finally, let's finish off with a duh tip twofer. We're gonna start things off with an email from Diane, who writes, I was sure the degree sign was available on the keyboard, but I couldn't find it. Luckily, a simple solution is there. Just hold down the zero key, and the degree symbol is selectable. What? Thank you, Diane, I never knew that. It's funny because none of the other number keys have any hidden goodies buried beneath. I checked. Looks like next time I gloat that the weather in Miami is 81 degrees all weekend, I can turn it up a notch. Okay, next uh, tip comes from Lee, who has a tip for anybody who finds themselves navigating to the same address in Safari over and over. He writes, if you have a web page you constantly return to in Safari, you can add it to the home screen right along with your apps. Go to the page, hit the share button below, and tap add to home screen. It'll turn that page into a toppable app so you never have to search through bookmark folders for it ever again. Ah yes, this is an oldie but a goodie. Sometimes there's no app for what you want to do, or you might just prefer a mobile version of a web page over the equivalent app. And in both cases, you can make a shortcut that acts like an app. You can call it whatever you want, you throw it in whatever folder you want. The power is yours. 
Well, that about does it for this edition of i5. If you ever see or hear of a great app or trick that we mention, and you want to go back over it or pass it along to someone else, just hop on over to our show notes at twit.tv slash i5. That's where all of our links live, where you can subscribe to the show, or just hang out for a while. Email us at i5 at twit.tv, leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5, or send us a video with an app review of your own. I promise to feature you, unless you choke. I'm Sarah Lane, this is i5 for the iPhone, and I'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching.